In this advent of expectation, draw us together in unity, that our praise and worship might echo in our homes and our fellowship and also through our lives. In this advent of expectation, draw us together in mission, that the hope within might be the song we sing and the melody of our lives. In this advent of expectation, draw us together in service, that the path we follow might lead us from a stable to a glimpse of eternity. In the name of our Saviour Jesus Christ, the Advent King. Amen. Hello and welcome to our Sunday morning sermon for Sunday the 29th of November. This is the first Sunday of Advent 2020. Father God, help us to hear your word, help us to receive your word and help us to act on your word. Bless us now as we share together. Amen. We're in a time of Advent Advent traditionally is a time of waiting and preparation. It's a time perhaps to be more simple, waiting for the festival of Christmas. But it's important to remember that Advent is not just a time where we retell the Christmas story. It's not a plan to do the bits of the first Christmas but it's much more than that, that we look at Christ's coming 2,000 years ago and we prepare ourselves for Christ's coming, both into our lives today and Christ's coming again, as and when the Lord God decides. We're going to look at one of the prophecies. And in the Old Testament, there are a number of prophecies that we see come true in the first Christmas. 
and we will very often use parts of those and in Handel's Messiah there are words used that we'll hear in just a moment. But many of these prophecies talk to the children of Israel. They use the word Jerusalem as a focus of the people, the people desiring to be saved, to be drawn back together, to be redeemed into a closer relationship with Father God. The children of Israel were waiting for the Messiah, the promised one, and they saw Jerusalem as their focus. And so as we listen to those prophecies, we think about those people patiently waiting for the Messiah to come. But it's also perhaps a challenge for us to look at these prophecies in the context of Christ's return as well. And to hear them and read them as a prompt to us and the world as we await the coming again of the promised one, Jesus Christ. Our reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 through to 10a. So that's Isaiah chapter 40 and we're beginning at verse 1. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty has been paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All the people are grass and their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand for ever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're just going to look at three parts of this, but we're going to do it twice. This is this amazing prophecy, this idea that the Lord would be on the move and valleys would be lifted up and the, the way made straight. In those days, there was an idea, a tradition, that when the king would be on the move with his whole retinue, the land ahead would be prepared and everyone would be able to see the king on the move. Whether it truly happened or not, we don't know. But this prophecy is being used to say that God is preparing the way and that as the promised one, the Messiah, comes, all flesh shall see it. 
So let's have a look at this. First, in the context of Christ coming that very first Christmas. Verses 1 and 2a say, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty has been paid. The faithful ones looking for the promised Messiah needed comfort. They were in a time of great uncertainty. They knew that it was not as it should be. They wanted to be in closer relationship with God. They were waiting. And in amongst that waiting was this sense of atonement. Making good for the sins. Their own sins, the sins of the nation, the sins of the past. And that the promise in this prophecy is that God will deal with redeeming his people. In verse 5 we read, Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This promise many thousands of years ago to the children of Israel was that God had a Messiah for them, a promised one. But interesting, it actually says that this is for all humankind. That this plan is indeed God ordained. This is God's plan to redeem his people. And now near the end of the passage that we've looked at in verses 9 and 10a. Get up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him. The prophecy encouraged the faithful children of God to welcome the Messiah, to witness to the coming of the promised one, to acknowledge that this promised one wasn't just another prophet, but the promised one was the mighty Lord God himself, come as Christ to the earth. So what about it if we look at this in terms of Christ's return? The passage about comfort and waiting reminds us that we are now in a time where the world is hurting. The world is waiting. In some ways the world is far from a good and close relationship with God. It needs a saviour. It needs to be redeemed and the cost of that atonement is one that we will never manage to pay. And yet the prophecy says that God has already addressed what needs to be repaid. The atonement for our sins, for the world's mess ups, has been paid because he has sent a saviour. Looking towards Christ's second coming, we think about this promised Messiah. For many people, for most of the world, the promised one is unknown at the present. But God has a plan to redeem his world and one day, this will be realised. His plan is to draw back his faithful one into the fold. That there will be, in a sense, a new earth and a new Jerusalem. He has the promise of something better to come. 
unknown at present, but one day revealed. And as we look to the future, we as people that follow Jesus need to be bold. We need to cry out. We need to be heralds. We know something of the good news. The new Jerusalem, the new earth, eternal life in Christ Jesus is not just a lovely little idea of what happens when we die. We have the good news that God has sent his son to come to this world. He came to save the lost, to redeem the messed up. He came with the promise of new life. And even more excitingly, this saviour will come again. Help us as we approach Christmas to find time to reflect on the wonder of Jesus coming to this earth and the good news that Jesus the Saviour loves us, has redeemed us and ultimately wants us to be in good relationship with God the Trinity. Amen. So we close our worship together with a prayer. God of power and mercy, open our hearts in welcome. Remove the things that hinder us from receiving Christ with joy, so that we may share his wisdom and become one with him when he comes in glory. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Whatever you're doing, go with God and stay safe.